Well, it, it, it's, it's something that somehow reaches deep into your soul. Uh, you, sir, have quite a gift. And before we get into exactly what people will see and what people will feel when they see what you've done, can we do a little bit of the backstory first and tell us a little bit about, about yourself and uh, about your family? Because many in your family have, have served and worn the uniform. Sure. And you might have to get right up on that microphone. Yeah, by sure. The way. Um, my family does uh, kind of have a, a history in, a, in our uh, nation's wars. My grandfather was a B-24 pilot, Bud Reed. Uh, my father, uh, Buddy Reed, or Mylan uh, II, uh, served in Vietnam in the Air Force in a um, crypto um, kind of top secret unit that uh, is all declassified today, but they would basically copy code over enemy territory. And, and um, then my uncle, my, my dad's brother, also served in the uh, Coast Guard Reserve for 33 years and was named Reservist of the Year one year. I believe it was 86. Um, and uh, he uh, left uh, the Coast Guard as a chief. So, you know, it was never uh, a topic that was delivered by the pounding of chests, you know, or boasting about yeah. about the service, but it was definitely always present and, and always there. And I, I also remember in high school, you know, considering what I would do after and talking about that with my dad and him, uh, you know, encouraging me to maybe consider an academy and uh, that we could go down and, you know, kind of camp out in our elected representative's office and try to get a, a letter of recommendation for one, for one of those uh, uh, illustrious institutions. And, and I just remember feeling like that way of life might, might not be for me, uh, that uh, I'd be interested in, in some aspects of it, but, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, jive with, with everything. So um, I ended up going to school. I was pre-med physics major. I uh, went here uh, in Grand Rapids to Calvin College. And uh, somewhere along that path, I found out a, a quite a bit more about myself and more about um, the practice of medicine and, and started to kind of rethink things. And at the same time, I think all that influence, I had three uncles that were professional photographers, including my dad's brother, uh, who was in the Coast Guard uh, also. And um, it just picked up the camera as a hobby and the more I learned about photography and the way it was functioning in the world uh, looking at Vietnam imagery and how that changed our collective conscience it as did, a nation uh, those those were all things that really inspired me to to pick up the camera and see it uh, as a as a tool uh, for for influencing people now take us then through the process of how you were able to uh, get yourself embedded with our troops in Afghanistan. Yeah, so uh, in this generation of, of Reed men, uh, there, there's four, but uh, one um, currently serves, and uh, it's my cousin Ted. And he was a teacher, third grade, uh, had a master's degree in educational technology, and um, he saw the events of 9-11 like, like all of us and, and made a very specific choice for his life and decided that he would um, that he would put down teaching for a while and um, and get into get into the military and um, he fast forward to you know 2012 um, he's in the band of brothers battalion the first of the 506 of the 101st airborne uh, division and he is um, you know he's a captain a company commander mechanized unit and um, I had been um, documenting quite a bit of America and, and trying to understand the, the full impact of these wars on, on our society, both economically, politically, and uh, I was really curious to see, um, you know, firsthand um, the one percent that uh, of our population that serves and, and how 
that are doing the heavy lifting for us and what those impacts on their life would be. So uh, my wife and I were driving back from Florida, um, visiting uh, family down there, and um, my cousin and his battalion, a uh, small group of them, were in Fort Polk, Louisiana, at the Joint Readiness Training Center, and wanted to take him out for lunch, so we did that and brought him back to post, and then uh, he introduced me to the Lieutenant Colonel Battalion Commander. And I think, honestly, I can't remember who pitched who on the idea of, you know, following them through a, uh, an entire training, deployment, and reintegration cycle. Um, I think he felt maybe the obligation, responsibility to have this generation's Band of Brothers documented. And, and for me, it was certainly um, a, a point of both personal uh, curiosity and, and um, kind of global global interest so um i um so just started your, following your career as a photojournalist then began well i had actually been to war before as a photojournalist and uh straight out of college some 12 years earlier i had uh, sold the car moved to africa wanted to be a magazine photographer coming straight out of college and and um and had fallen kind of unaware into um, covering South Sudan's uh, refugee diaspora and then getting curious about why there's hundreds of thousands of refugees on the other side of, of Sudan's borders um, and kind of tracing their steps back into South Sudan with uh, rebels, with um, aid groups, and uh, I just kept following that story. Um, I'd come back home, go to New York, try to show my pictures, try to get some stuff published, had some small successes there and um, would would go back and uh, continue that cycle. And then um, Darfur broke out in, in uh, western Sudan and uh, had an opportunity to go cover that as well. And coming back after about two and a half years of, of covering uh, these wars, um, just felt flat uh, on finding an audience for the work in, in, in the traditional media sources. Mm -hmm. And what I com came to realize is that what Edward R. Murrow talked about as far as advertising, kind of dictating content, you know, has fully come to pass today um, in, in that their main revenue model is, is advertising. And it, it, in my estimation, is in direct conflict with... Uh, Interferes with art. ...with the mission of, yeah. of telling the news. So what did you decide to name your exhibit and why? So the, the exhibition we're showing here at the, at the Graham is uh, entitled Despite Similarities to Reality, This is a Work of Fiction. And for me, it's an extremely loaded title. Um, first off, you know, I think it, it is a reflection of, of the scope of the project for me personally, which was to spend time with uh, with a man that I grew up with, that I admired. Uh, I had no siblings, so my cousin Ted was was my essentially my brother, and, and his brothers were mine as well. So um, it, was, it was an opportunity to close the gap of understanding between a civilian and a soldier and uh, try to understand from the position of one of the 99 percenters who aren't doing the heavy lifting in these wars what we're asking of of the one percent it, it could also be seen as you know as a, um, a disclaimer about my own work in in the sense that i too had public affairs um you know at, at least at first breathing down my neck and telling me you know where my left limits are where my right limits are everything that's off limits and if god forbid i should see any of that that i surely can't show the public so um i think it's a it's a reflection of what how the media and how the news about these wars have been so heavily edited and so heavily um, anesthetized and sanitized. I have to tell you what you showed me. Ryan, I have, I have friends, and my sons have friends who've done multiple tours in Afghanistan and Iraq and, and other troubled spots in the world. And we were always so happy when they came home. And typical of the men and women who wear the uniform, they don't come home and 
talk a great deal or brag about their exploits. And until I walked through your exhibit here last week, I thought I understood what they were doing. I was wrong. I, I looked at your work for quite a bit of time. And perhaps for the first time, became aware of what life is like and what their daily experiences are all about. I won't deny that there were tears. You opened a door for me and I have much, even more respect than I had previously for the people who serve in our military. 92. Yeah, for me, um, I, I think if we, uh, you know, again, we, we have the luxury of living in, an, in a society uh, where we are an empire, we are a superpower, and we have the technology to afford only 1% of, of our population to, to prosecute our wars for us and in our name. And I think if we truly knew the cost of that, uh, and what we're asking of of our young men and women, we would insist that the wars uh, that are prosecuted in our name be as honorable as the young men and women uh, that we ask to do that heavy lifting. And, you know, we would get engaged. We would take that responsibility on, and we would take it seriously. Um, and that's, you know, by no means a commentary about these wars uh, politically politically. Um, in any way, it's just, uh, I think it's just the reality. We're 99% and we, we can go on with life virtually unscathed by these wars. And it, it creates, I think, a situation where fewer and fewer people know that true cost. Um, and it creates a situation, therefore, that I think it's easy to, to justify war. We're speaking with Ryan Spencer Reed. His creation is, despite similarities to reality, this is a work of fiction, and it's something that you absolutely must see and experience here at the Grand Rapids Art Museum during Art Prize. We'll be back with more next year. This is West Michigan Live on News Radio Wood 1300 and 1069 FM. We are at the beautiful Grand Rapids Art Museum. And, and by the way, when you come down for Art Prize, make sure you stop in the museum, kind of the hub for me, if you will. I have guests from out of town, so this is going to be the first place we come uh, to experience Art Prize. I highly recommend that. And while you're here, if I may also suggest that you look into memberships here because there are big-time benefits. And I mean that sincerely. Uh, great, great deal. And as a matter of fact, we're speaking with one of the artists uh, displaying his work here at the Grand Rapids Art Museum, Ryan Spencer Reed, a Michigander, originally from the Ludington area. Uh, his exhibit is called Despite Similarities to Reality. This is a work of fiction, and it will indeed take your breath away. Uh, it had a profound effect on me. Uh, Ryan was embedded with our forces in Afghanistan and has brought uh, a number of pieces from that life back here for us to experience. And there are so many to talk about. Um, I, I will say that the one that probably got to me uh, most deeply uh, was the one, Ryan, watching a young soldier watching the birth of his child in a little tent via Skype. I mean, how in, in the I don't I just don't understand the gift that you have to see what's happening and save it for prosperity. Well, a, a lot of my work begins, you know, it, it, it happens over a long period of time. Uh, it takes a very long time to build rapport and to build trust uh, and to gain access to those intimate moments of, of another person's life and uh, learn those lessons from Sudan, um, you know, dealing with 
with uh, a story uh, that required you to kind of infiltrate and um, you know transgress on on a person's life in their most vulnerable state and in this case uh, most often we we were dealing with um, you know a lot of just daily life of soldiers and things happening so you know getting in early going through training with these guys building rapport was was absolutely required to to get that kind of uh, photograph and in this case um, you know seeing seeing a, a young man um, watching the birth of of his first child and a son um, seeing the excitement the emotion um, and in that particular picture you know we see his back we see um, the doctor um, offering up on on an iPad his son um, half a world away and we see his body kind of gesturing, kind of contorted by the by the emotion of it, almost um, you know causing causing his body to to contort. And we see his um, elbow uh, and his in his hand over over his mouth, and uh, just all that emotion. Um, it was awe. Sometimes it just all comes together, and but it. But uh, I had a physics professor say that luck is the product of design, and and ultimately, if it wasn't for the year and a month, um, you, you know, that I had access to these guys in training, and then the the three month deployment, um, pictures like that just aren't aren't possible. Do you have any idea how many f photographs you actually took during that three month deployment? Tens of thousands um, over the course of the two and a half years um, but they love you at walgreens yeah right um but that was a joke by sure the way. <laughs> right over <laughs> yeah but you know we um it, probably i have no idea for the deployment uh maybe thirty thousand pictures um how you know. in the world did you narrow it down to the size of the exhibit you have here um you know a lot of the training photographs were um you know were definitely going through the motions and and just I, I liken it to being in an attic and and wanting to make a very pristine picture of that attic and you can imagine the dust building up over generations and when you throw that door open all the dust just flies into the air but that's not the picture you want you wanted the one where it was pristine and it was as it as it existed before you interrupted uh, the situation so that that's kind of the process is you know the door goes wide open when you when you come into a dynamic as as an outsider and you just have to if you want authentic life um, to be represented you just have to wait you have to wait for the dust to settle you have to wait for them to either forget that you're there uh, again or just um, get so you know tired of your presence that they just go back to being who they are naturally were you ever afraid for your life there were definitely uh, some tough days, um, but uh, I, you know I, I'm glad that as many came home as did. You know we, we lost five with that unit, and I'm sorry that must have been difficult. We're glad you are here, and highly recommend that you see the work of Ryan Spencer Reed here during Art Prize at the Grand Rapids Art Museum. And by the way, that is the coolest jacket I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Ryan, thank you very much for being with us here today. Come see Art Prize. We're live at the Grand Rapids Art Museum. I'm Neil Dion on West Michigan Live, News Radio, Wood 1300 and 106.9 FM.